If you were to be asked which is one of your hobbies and you're Nigerian or even African, chances are it will be dancing. Now, if you have two left feet like uh, Mazzino, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> uh, but this time on Creative Corner, we're going to be taking a look at a studio or center uh, where dance is being turned to transform lives. And this time, it's contemporary dancing. On Creative Corner today, we took a journey to the Q uh, Dance uh, Center where children have been transforming their life with what is as simple and as fun as dance. Take a look. Kieran Center started 10 years ago uh, when myself and my partner, we moved back to Nigeria from France. And um, we started really looking at the, the, the landscape and uh, we thought uh, for some reason uh, that many people know, uh, young people make the, you know, the, the mass of Nigerians, 65% of our population are below 25, I think. And then when I started digging into that, I realized that 80% of that population are unemployed or underengaged. So I started thinking, how can, because I'm a dancer and a choreographer primarily, how can dance really, my role as a choreographer, how can it come into uh, uh, tackling other issues that are not choreographic issues? more or less say like how can i choreograph my way through real problems so we said okay you know what we studied that even though the young people were underemployed uh, but at the same time ironically they were the ones that were really like very active in the social media platform especially instagram um, as much as we were jobless we we're also producing a whole lot of content for big corporations like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and all of them. So I was like, okay, what if I create a kind of a, a space, physical space where we can take that attention and then bring our own expertise, our own talents, our exposure, our knowledge, our understanding. What if we bring all of that to young people? How can we generate wealth out of that? How can we also then create something that is tangible and exportable as well? I have just a slight condition. <laughs> it's um, scoliosis with the nerve um, twitch, which is called, some people know it as cerebral paralysis or whatever, but yeah, it's just a slight condition. And part of this actually helped and influenced my dancing and why I became a dancer up until now. I ended from dance in 20, to, um, 2006, yes. Then I worked with a couple of people, attended workshops, just basically tried to develop myself with even with my condition and how people see me and all of that, but it's, it feels like <laughs> I, I was just so focused with dance and what it, um, what it should become of me. I met the Q Dance Center and actually I met with Kudus first <laughs> before meeting with the Q Dance Center and we started with a workshop for Iwalewa and I think that was it. For me, uh, dance is the most um, sophisticated way at which every human being use uh, their body intelligence. So dance is not something that is foreign to anybody. Uh, everybody knows dance. Uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, the level must, might, might be different, but everybody can dance. I come from that understanding. So once that is set for me, then I can start working with any kind of body, any kind. A disabled body, able body, female body, male body, young body, old body, frail body, baby body, whatever body. Uh, I, so far I can understand what moves in that person, then my work is just to orchestrate it and help them, you know. So now if, that is, if that's what people call contemporary dance, then that's what I do. 
10 years down the line, uh, the project has been very, very successful. Uh, I wouldn't lie. We've done a whole lot of different projects locally, nationally, internationally. Uh, when we started, it was very clear for us that we didn't want to focus our activities only in Lagos. So we've been traveling to Jaws, to Enugu, to Kaduna, to Abuja, to Ibadan, to Ogun State, to, to just make sure that we keep uh, uh, amalgamating different young people who normally will mostly know themselves on Instagram, but we made it at a point of uh, responsibility to organize different kind of events and gatherings and projects that brings people from all over Nigeria. The very first project we did when we uh, started was in 2015. Uh, there was a project called Iwalewa. Iwalewa was uh, a project we did with the British Council. There was a company from the UK <clears throat> who was a company that works with uh, abled and disabled bodies. And they came to Nigeria to partner with us. And then in that partnership, we also got to work with, uh, we, we were able to work with dancers with disability and without disability. Even though it was not, it didn't go internationally, but that formed the base of the kinds of work we wanted to do and the level of, we wanted to push it. It took us nine years before we eventually decided to formalize the, the school. Um, the idea came very fast because, you know, I was away uh, teaching at the University of Florida between 2020 and 2023. So I was always in and out of the country. So our project here just stayed mostly on our international tour with reincarnation. But when we came back uh, May this year, uh, similar to when we came back in 10 years ago, we in June or something like that, or July, we just had the idea of, you know, well, let's start this school fully. And one month later, I was on the road, uh, went to Jos, went to Abuja, went to Benin City. Then we did audition in Lagos. I think that was it. This period of being a student of the Q School um, gave dance a meaning for me because it really helped me through a lot. Made me see other sides of me that I did not even know or that I could um, actually do, or things that I could actually do. It enhanced my ability to do other things. Um, <clears throat> I've always thought that I could really, 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 really dance until I came here and I saw dance from like a different perspective. And dance is not just moving your body, there's a whole lot to it. And then <clears throat> that dance is not just for entertainment, dance is therapeutic, dance is a whole lot more that people don't even know. Sometimes when I hold these conversations with people from what I have learned here, people cannot even um, argue with me because most times they know that, oh, dance is just for you to just come and do after and then that's all of it. But they don't know that dance is deeper than that. It touches other aspects of life that people don't even have an idea about. For some persons, it's just for fun, but for us, it goes beyond that. Knowing the Q Dance Company, I've been able to see dance from a different perspective and not just dancing for dancing's sake. So it's almost like the dance is part of your life. You're using the dance to research into your being your knowing of yourself mentally, intellectually, how you see the world, how you assess your body as a human, how you sense and feel yourself. So I feel like going through the part of dancing as a creative venture has shaped my life very differently from the normal, you know, everyday, today work life. It's been really taxing, if I should say. It's been really taxing because three years ago, I was like, when we're in the space dance gathering, I was totally off from everything everybody was doing. Like, what are these guys doing? Why are they moving like this? It, was, it, was, it wasn't like the regular. I was trying to adapt and I knew what I was doing at that time. I was always at the back because I couldn't adapt. It was a whole new space for me and then trying to fit into it, it was really challenging for me. And 
I grew up with that. From that moment, I grew up with that urge to really go into myself, to really understand why is this space different from every other space. One of the reasons why we are very different in, in the country is because when we started working, we, the way we conceptualized what a dance center could look like or could be was very new to a lot of people. Um, in fact, they're like, how will you guys survive? How do you, how do you, how will you make money? You don't, you say you don't do TV shows. You don't do end of the year party. You don't dance in weddings. You know, how are you going to survive? We have understood how to actually realize that dance is one of the very few professions that creates a whole lot of added value to other people's uh, projects. I can work with a musician, I can work with a filmmaker, I can work with an animator, I can work with uh, a tech company. There's so many things that we can do, but majority of the people are focused only on one side of what dance can mean or what dance can generate. But we, because myself and my partner, we we think divergently. So eventually we are really putting our, our hands and legs in many different things that people didn't even know that we could do with dance. Currently, um, we, we are working on a project tied to Terrapolis. And um, Terrapolis is my, is, 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 was born out of my current uh, obsession, which is the question of climate change. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I, I have a very strong uh, interest in, in, in ancient philosophy, ancient Yoruba intelligence and uh, uh, cosmogony. So I've always been thinking, uh, there's a whole lot of people in the world that is talking about climate change from the point of view of, oh, what we've done to the earth, what we've done to the climate, what we've done to the environment. Uh, but I've always been very wary of that conversation about the we. Who is the we? Uh, because without um, industrial revolution, we wouldn't be where we are now. And without slavery and colonization, there would have been no uh, industrial revolution. So in a way, there's something called climate injustice as well that we have to deal with. The amount of injustices that has happened to indigenous people, either from South America or from Africa, is never being in question when we talk about the solution or the problematization of what we are doing to the earth. And for me, since I have an interest in this conversation, like every other thing, I'm then looking for ways to bring my own indigenous knowledge into this conversation. So instead of uh, the Royal British family that saw the sea as a logistic thing where you put a slave ship and go to the other part of the world to get slaves and then take it to the other part of the world and then get natural resources and then take it back to their own country to turn into industrial revolution. Some other people, my ancestors had been busy sacralizing the sea and worshiping and having a Int in intimate relationship with it and, and and they have a much more respectful relationship with the sea this is just an example and i can say the same thing for nature for the forest for the wind for fire for all the elements that we are now aware of fully so our piece is talking about climate change but more than just talking about the problems thinking of what way can we appease this endangered or en enraged energies so if we look at the question of tornado, volcanic eruption, and, and uh, what sea, sea level rising, and uh, why don't we, instead of talking about sea level rising, why don't we appease Yemoja? Instead of talking about the problem of tornado and, and wind problem, why don't we appease Oya? Instead of talking about the wildfire and everything that's happening, why don't we appease Shango? So for me, that's where, that's the corner, the angle we are coming in, into this piece from. So it's something that you should look or to see it's going to be crazy.